In this video, we're going to look at chapter one from our book, our SimNet book, and we're going to be concentrating on commands having to do with formatting and creating a series using the fill handle. We're going to begin by going to week two within ULEARN, and we're going to open up our file. And the name of our file, once again, it's going to be called Chapter One Lesson. So we're going to click on it, we're going to open it up. We want to make sure we enable the editing. Make it a little bit bigger here, and now we're going to start. And once again, we're going to be concentrating primarily on formatting and also creating a series. Our objective is really to get our file here, which is not populated yet, to look similar to this area right here. Name of it being McKenna Memorial Hospital. It's accounts receivable. And we have these various labels or field names. We want to have them wide enough. And then the data filled in. Okay, we're going to begin by creating a theme. How we create a theme is by clicking on the page layout. Come over to themes. Click on it. So we've clicked on themes. And the theme that we're looking for is called organic. So we're going to have to come down here, find that theme. And you kind of hover over, it'll tell you this is the organic theme. Click here, and we're all set. Now, once again, themes, and the name of it is organic. Okay, next we're going to kind of come over here and look at our sheet here. And we're going to be primarily working with using the fill handle and copying patterns okay so we have a a label called admit date you know when the people come into the hospital there's a billing id for everyone who comes in there's a patient id for each individual patient when that patient pays how that patient the payment type they're either paying by cash check or credit card uh, also in terms of how much the patient paid and then lastly we're going to kind of cal calculate the percentage of the total okay so we're going to begin by looking at the admit date when you look at this admit date what the pattern is the first date is 10 1 2016 the second one is 10 4 2016 there's a basically a three-day difference. And I mean, you know, and when you look further on down the column, you have seven tens, or rather October 7th, October 10th, three-day difference, October 13th to October 16th, three-day difference. So there's always a three-day difference. So we're going to begin by coming over here to A5, and we're going to type in 10 slash 1 slash 16. That's our first date. Our second date is 10-4. So we got that, our first two dates. And I mean, that's how we're going to establish our pattern. Like there's a three-day difference between each of the dates. So we're going to come up to 10-1, hold down our left mouse. We're going to highlight those two entries. We're going to then come over to the fill handle, and this is so important. Fill handle, the little rectangle, lower right-hand corner. You know you have it when you hover over it, and you have a plus sign. Hold down the left mouse, and let's drag down that pattern. Release, and you can see it's just like the one that we had that has already been done for us. Let's go over it. Next, we're going to do the billing ID, 100, 101. Difference of one, it's increasing by one. We're going to highlight those first two entries. And then, once again, come over to the fill handle, 
and drag it down. Next, we're going to type in our patient IDs. So we got Mac number one or zero one. Then we have Mac two. Highlight both of them. Go to our fill handle and drag it down. Payment date. Our first pay date is 10 8 16. Our second date is 10 11 16. So 10 8. 10, 11, three day difference. I mean, that's our pattern. Highlight both, come to our fill handle, and copy that pattern down. Payment type, like there's three types of payment. You can either pay by cash, by check, or by, uh, or by credit card. So I'm gonna type in those three. After typing in our pattern, we have cash, check, credit card. I'm going to highlight those three entries, and I want to copy that pattern down, or that series. Highlight the three entries, go to your fill handle, and copy down. Next, the amount that's paid. We're going to have increments increasing at $50, first one being $500. But all of a sudden, it's coming up as a date. We need to change the format. And I mean, how we do that, where we have this date, right click, format, or format cells. And we want to change it to a number. And we're going to change it to general. Click OK. We're going to type in 550. Once again, we're going to have to make that change for the format. Could have cut a corner there, but that's all right. Format cells, category, okay. So we have our two numbers, 500, 550. Highlight both. Come to the fill handle and copy it down. As you can see here, what I've already done is I put in a formula that's totaled up the entire amount that has been paid. Once again, I'm clicked here within this cell, F26. Here's my formula. I summed from F5 to F25. Whenever I want to verify that formula, I can use the range finder. And the easiest way of doing that is by quickly double left clicking. And it's showing me graphically that I want to sum from F5 to F25. So that's correct. Next, I'm going to come into cell G5, and I'm going to use a formula to calculate the percentage of the total. And we're going to get into this more in Chapter 2, the idea of an absolute. But I'm going to show you how it's, how it's done. What we want to do is for each of the entries, we have 500 divided by 21,000, 550 divided by 21,000, 21,000 always being the total. So we're trying to calculate the percentage of the total. Next, it would be 600 divided by 21,000. The key here is to recognize that pattern. And I mean, and the pattern is the denominator will always be 
21,000. We need to fix that. We, we need to hold that steady. So the way to do that, it is a formula, equal. Click on the 500, which happens to be in F5, divided by 21,000. And then to fix or make absolute the denominator, I click up here next to F26 and then tap function key 4. Our formula being F5, the 500, divided by dollar sign F, dollar sign 26. We've made this denominator an absolute. That's what happened when I tapped F4. By tapping F4, you notice here we have now a dollar sign before the F and a dollar sign before the 26. We've locked in that value. We've made it into an absolute. Now, once again, this is not covered in Chapter 1. Okay, it will be covered in Chapter 2. But I wanted to show it to you right now. We're going to look at this more in detail when we get to Chapter 2. This is a chapter two topic. Click the check mark. Let's change the formatting to percentage. How you do that is by clicking in home, percent. If I want to increase the percentage or decrease it, I'm going to use these buttons up here. Let's increase it one place. To double check that formula, quickly double left click. Looks good. If you've done your first pattern correctly, it means that you can copy it down. Go to your fill handle, you've got your plus, drag it down. Come to that last one, and let's check it, double check it. Quickly double left click, and what it's showing us. F25, which is the 1500, divided by 21,000. And once again, you're going to notice that the, that the denominator, the total, which is F26, it's contained in the cell F26, but this it always has a dollar sign F, dollar sign 26. It's an absolute, it's a fixed value, it's a constant. But we're going to once again look at that. Once again, for that topic of an absolute, we're going to be looking that, looking more at the idea of an absolute during Chapter 2. I mean, it will not be covered yet in Chapter 1. Okay, next we're going to do a little bit more formatting. Uh, we're going to basically be looking at the patient ID label we're going to increase the indent. Likewise, for the payment type, we're also going to increase the indent. Now, how you do that is you highlight the area that you're going to increase the indent. This area right here. You're in the Home tab. Come over here to our button. First one is decrease. We don't want to do that. We want to increase our indent. So let's increase it by one. And what you can see, it's moved over. Let's come over here to payment type. You can see it's flush right over to the left. We're going to highlight that area. Once again, we're in the home tab and we're going to increase the indent by one. If I did it by two, I would click it again. But let's go back one. So once again, it's just highlighting and coming up here to increase your indent. Next, we're going to use the accounting format. Okay. To use the accounting format, it's customary for dollars and cents to use the accounting format. You highlight the area. You're in your home tab. Come up here, accounting format. Once again, the accounting format will place a dollar sign before 
all your information. Next, we're going to look at our titles and subtitles. And we're going to basically merge and center them at the same time. Okay, this is new in 2016. So we're going to highlight this area from A1 all the way down to G2. So once again, we want to take that title and subtitle. We're going to merge and center it. The steps are, first off, highlight the area. Then come up here and click on Center. Then come over to the right on Merge and Center. Hit the down arrow. And we want to merge across, and that's important, okay? They're asking us to merge across, or center across. Click right here for Merge Across. And you can see that everything has been changed. After doing that, we're going to change the font size to 18. So this area is highlighted. All we have to do is come up here and change that 12 to 18. Next, we're going to take our labels here. Highlight our labels. Bold. And then we're also going to center them. And then we're going to auto fit everything. Easiest way of doing that is by coming up to the global button. And in between any of the columns, D and E or E and F, we're going to have a cross and quickly double left click. They've now been auto fit. Next, we're going to change a fill, a fill color. And how you do go about that is you need to highlight the area first. So we're basically highlighting A1 to G2. And then we're going to highlight these labels down here. So we've done our first area. Keeping in mind there's a space here. How to get that non-adjacent area, this second area, after you've done one, is to hold down the control key, hold down the left mouse, and then highlight that second area. Once again, the control key, by holding down that control key, you're able to highlight a second or third or fourth area if it's not next to each other. So we've got to have both areas highlighted. What we're going to do next is come up to the paint bucket, hit the down arrow, and what we're looking for as a color is green, accent one, lighter 60. Green, accent one, lighter 60. Kind of hover over it, it will show you green accent one lighter 60. Click on it. That is done. We're going to do some more filling in the colors. Once again, we're going to be using this green accent one lighter 60. few different ways of applying the, this fill color to some additional rows, but I, I think the easiest way to do it would be to highlight the rows that you want to do, hold down the control key, and highlight this area, still holding down the control key, Highlight this area. Holding down the control key will highlight this area. So we've highlighted four additional areas. We're going to come up here to the fill color. 
And once again, we're going to choose that green accent one later 60. So we've applied that color to additional rows. Next, what we're also going to do is we're going to do some additional formatting. We're going to apply all borders. And then we're going to apply outside borders. To apply borders, you need to highlight the area in question. Once again, we're going to apply borders, all borders. So I highlighted this area. I'm in the Home tab. This is the borders. Click the down arrow and then click on All Borders. You can see that you now have borders similar to what we have here. We're going to highlight our title and subtitle. Highlight them both. Come up to Borders. Hit the down arrow. And for this one, what we're looking for is an outside border. Next, what we're going to do is uh, define our page layout, and we're also going to add some document properties. But probably the more important aspect is this idea of uh, working with the page layout. Whenever you're talking about working with the page layout, you're talking about preparing a document for printing. Okay? So, to prepare for printing, there's a few different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you this way right here. If you click on page layout, once again, page layout primarily has to do with preparing your document for printing. Come down here for where we have page setup. There's a little arrow. This is important. It makes things a lot easier. Click here. And then to center your worksheet horizontally. Once again, a real important concept. To center the worksheet horizontally on the page, what you do once this is open is click on Margins, Center on a Page, check, check off horizontally. So you want to click in here horizontally. Next we want to work with a, with a header. So how we do that is clicking on header and footer. Click on custom header. Whenever you're dealing with a header or a footer, it's always made up of three parts. It's a left section, a center, and a right section. For that left section, we're going to place the sheet name. And how you do that is you kind of hover over these icons. And the sheet name, how to insert a sheet name, it's this picture right here. Click in the right section. We're going to type in our name. Click OK. Click OK again. To type in your properties or change the properties of the sheet, you click on File. Come over here to Properties, Advanced Properties. You can change the title of the sheet here and, of course, put in your name. I'm just going to type in uh, Accounts Receivable. Okay. 
or if there was a mechanic. Click OK. Come over here to Save As. Because once again, we want to be able to save that file. Look, we've done all of our work. Save it to this PC. Make sure we have the right name of the file. If I want to change the location, I can click up here. Come over here to Documents. In my case, I'm going to look for a folder called Fall 2016. So it's in my Documents, Fall 2016. Click Save. Thank you.